Hi, welcome back. This is Jim again. And today, uh, all of our really uh, complex looking code to do what seems like a very simple thing is going to pay off as I show you uh, how we're going to make an obstacle that will block the path of our actor. And uh, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to get a, a new actor, new actor subclass, I'll call it obstacle, because that's the role it's going to play. Uh, and I'll get a rock in this case. Obviously, you know, when you're doing these things, uh, I don't really say this, but obviously your actors can mostly be whatever you want, although um, sometimes the size of the actor will affect how uh, the code works. So you might want to pick things of similar size. So, and then uh, we'll just um, put one in the world. Um, and put an obstacle here, and I'll save the world so the obstacle's in there. Obviously now the bug will be able to walk right through the obstacle. As you'd expect, it's not gonna do anything different if you don't tell anything different. So what would we like to happen? What I'd like to happen is when a bug gets just about like right maybe there, right, that it would find out there's a rock in front of me and not let me move any further. That's what we'd really like to have happen. So what we'd really like to do is detect that there is a thing in about where we're just about to go. And luckily for us, we happen to know exactly where we're about to go. And that's what our code uh, was meant to do here. Um, and if, if you look, you can see our change x. So uh, if you remember, we have our get change x method and our get change y method, which are going to return uh, how much my x is going to change. So I can see uh, how wh where I'm going, so I can figure out where I'm going to be next. And so I can use a nice little um, uh, method, which is built into Greenfoot, called get one object at offset. So offset means um, the, you know, d basically offset means some different different something different from where we are right now and so the offset is going to be uh, basically from where we are uh, changed by whatever the change X and change Y is that's basically going to tell us where we would be next turn if we are allowed to move next turn and I can actually start to do this in a single just a few lines of code uh, I'm gonna so here's our this is our set location this is what actually makes us change our location right so if I say get one, uh, I'm sorry, if I say uh, actor obstacle, all right, actors, uh, it's an actor with, with this, uh, most of these methods don't return, they, they return just actor class, not the specific class that you want, um, but that's fine, we just want to know that uh, there's a, uh, so, and then obstacle is the, um, the variable that we're going to put the obstacle in if it's there, and we're going to do get one object at offset, And yeah, here it is right there. Um, and uh, return an object that's uh, located in a specific cell relative to this. So um, so we have the dx and dy. So basically the difference in x from where we are and the difference in y from where we are right now. So we know the difference in x right now is going to be our change x. And the difference in y right now is going to be our change y. And the obstacle when the class we're looking for is obstacle.class. So, um, if, if there is a thing there, it will, uh, so what's going to happen is, if there is a thing there, uh, it, that will become, that, that actor will be in this obstacle space, otherwise it's going to return null. And so the, if the obstacle is null, there is no rock in our way, and we're fine, we can move. If there is an obstacle, if there is something in the obstacle variable, that means there was is a rock in our way, and we shouldn't be able to move. So, I'm going to say if, we're saying obstacle equals null, so we want to be able to move if there is no obstacle there. So, we're saying we're going to get this obstacle, obstacle if it's there. If that obstacle really is there, that means it uh, is not null, then we shouldn't be able to move. But if there's no obstacle, then here, then the obstacle will be null, and then we can move. We can change our location. So, and let's look at how that works here. 
and it works kind of okay, right? Not really quite what we want because we can go kind of into the rock, right? So it's it's not perfect. It's it's good because it keeps us from going through the rock, which is kind of what we want. But we wouldn't. What we'd rather like is we don't really want to be able to stop here. We'd like to be stopped like right there, up on, no, like right about there, right? So just before we hit the rock, that's what we really want. So. What's going on here? Well, okay, so here, this is the middle of where we are right now, right? And our offset is uh, going to be two pixels to the right of wherever we were. So like uh, about this much right here, right? So it's so notice it's looking basically from here to about there, right? Uh, to from the middle of the bug to two pixels to the right of the middle of the bug or top or bottom, whichever direction we're going. Uh, we'd like for it to look all the way to the end of the bug and then two pixels after that. That's what we'd really like to do. Right. So what we'd like to do is look from we'd, we'd basically like to add like so the bug, I'll just tell you because I know is about 40 pixels wide. Right. So uh, what we'd really like to do is add 20 pixels, uh, which doesn't seem that hard, except we do have a bit of a problem because the problem here is in this case, I'm adding positive 20 pixels. I'd like to add positive 20 pixels in my offset that I'm looking for. But then if I'm going this way, I'd like to add negative 20 pixels in my offset that I'm looking for. So uh, what I need to know is like, what's the sign of this? Is, is, my, is, my, is my speed positive or negative? That's going to, is my offset, is my change act positive or negative? That's going to tell me whether I want to add minus 20 pixels from the center of the, from the center of the bug to the edge to positive 20 pixels. So uh, what, what I'm going to do, but there is, so uh, I'm going to teach you a little math function. So first what we're going to do is we're, we're going to make a method that uh, adjusts the offset, that, uh, that adjusts the offset to uh, match so it reaches, so it starts from the tip of the bug, right? So uh, so I'm going to call this uh, private. Private, again, meaning that only this uh, actor is going to want to call it. No other actor is going to have a need to call this. Um, int, uh, it's returning an integer, and I'm going to call it adjust offset, right? So our, uh, and then in here, I'm going to put int offset. So our change x and change y are really offset. They're basically uh, some, some, somewhere different from where we are right now, right? Some change in the x and y from where we are right now. So, uh, and basically the idea is, is it's really very simple, is if I'm, if my offset, if, if I'm facing, if my, uh, if my change X or change Y is negative, right, that means I'm up here, I'm, uh, I'm down here pointing up or I'm over here pointing left, then I want to add negative 20. If my change X and Y are positive, that is I'm right here or uh, right here going down, then I want to add positive 20. So what we really need to know is we need to know the sign of our um, of our offset. We need to know is it a positive or a negative. So uh, I'm going to teach you. So Java has a very powerful math um, uh, module, and it, and it has a bunch of just math stuff that it can kind of do for you. And uh, so if you do, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, input sign of offset. So we know exactly what it means. So, this, so we want the sign of the offset equals, and I, I'm going to use uh, math. So math dot, math dot gives you a bunch of useful math features. If you do this in control space, you're going to see all kinds of useful things. Um, you're going to have absolute values, logs, uh, uh, all, all kinds of useful things, minimum, maximum, uh, sine, cosine, exactly, but uh, etc. Et, et but what we're going to want specifically here is one called S I G N signum sine num. I think it's pronounced sine num, and uh, of offset. Now it's going to give me an error here. Uh, sine num is meant to work with a float or a double. Those are uh, those are numbers with decimals. Ours isn't going to have a decimal. Um, and so if you look here, it's going to say incompatible types, possible lossy conversion from float to int, 
uh, basically the compiler's worried that like maybe you'll have a decimal and you're going to lose it, right? It, it doesn't want you to, you know, uh, uh, lose some decimal that might be important to you. But what we want to do is we're, we want to just say, no, we really don't care. It's we, we, we know this could give me a float, but I don't want a float. I just want an integer. And so I'm going to teach you this idea, a really important idea of something called typing. And that's, uh, I think I'm actually, I, I have shown you this a little bit before, but what we're saying is, uh, I know this is a float, but just make it an integer. I, I, I'm, I'm fine with that, okay? Just turn this into an integer. And so what I do is in parentheses right before here, I put int. And so I'm saying turn this into an integer. And, my, uh, and, and that error, that particular error is going to go away. It's saying, okay, fine, you know, you, if you're sure you want an integer, then that's okay. You can't just turn anything into, into anything, right? This, this, this typing, right? P typing means you put the, the kind of data type that you want uh, before the uh, whatever thing you want to change, right? You can't just change anything into anything. You can't change an actor into an integer. You can't change. Uh, uh, you can't just change an integer into a string really easily like that. It, it's it's it, it only works for cer certain things. But because specifically what we're doing is we're saying because um, these are both kinds of numbers, right? I can say change this kind of number to this less precise kind of number, and the compiler will totally let me get away with it. So. Now I know, so this sign offset, what this is going to give me is basically one of three things. It's either going to be negative one if I, my sign is negative, positive one if my sign is positive, or zero if the number is zero. So it's it's basically there's three possible things that I can come from this, right? We want to add or subtract, you know, what we're going to add, right? So um, we're going to take take um, uh, the adjusted value, right? Um, we're going to find out, are we going to add or subtract 20, right? Um so we'll call it adjust amount equals. Now I'm doing something that I'm we really shouldn't do here, and I'm going to fix it a little bit later. I just happen to know that my sprite has a, a width of 40, which means half from the center to the edge is going to be 20. Uh, I'm doing this to make things simple simple for you right now, but I'm going to fix it later because I'm hard coding the actual size of the sprite in here, which is, is not, not good coding practice at all, but I just want to keep things simple right now. So I just happen to know that it's 20 pixels from the center of my sprite to the end. Later we're going to uh, make that more dynamic so it works, so it's, it's better coding practice. So 20 times the sign. Right? And so this is the amount we're adjusting by, right? And then all we're going to do is we're going to return uh, the uh, offset plus the adjust amount, like how much we're adjusting it by. Okay, so what we're doing, we're getting the sign. If it's negative, it'll be, ne or we'll have negative one. If it's positive, it'll be positive one. If it's zero, it'll be zero. Uh, and then we're going to multiply that by 20, a hard-coded number, because I just happen to know that my sprite is 40 pixels wide. So this is half of that. What We're going to make that better later. And then we're just going to add that to the offset. And so now what we're going to do is um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to put int uh, adjusted change x equals, and we'll do... Um, So adjusted change x equals adjusted, uh, oops, uh, spelled capital error there. Notice here, if, you, if your capitals aren't always exactly the same, it, you're going to get a, uh, a syntax error there because um, it, 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 the, if, if you have a diff different capital, it's a totally different thing to the compiler. So uh, and then we'll do int adjusted change y equals and now I'm going to do adjust offset and change y. And now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to first put in my semicolon like I should. And then I'll change this to adjusted change x and adjusted change y. And now we'll run it. And now we'll try this out. And very nice. Very nice. So now my rock 
uh, blocks me from going through in any direction and it stops at pretty much at my nose right there right uh, pretty much pretty close to as good as you can do programmer is tempted to say okay it works fine let's just leave it like that right uh, it works what's the problem right well what if I want to change my sprite what if I want to make my sp a different sprite that has a different size then all of a sudden that 20 is not going to be the right number what if my sprite becomes has a size of 60 or an 80 or something like that uh, what I really want to do is I want to uh, get this I want, I want to dynamically get this value based on what, what the sprite is and so what we really want to do basically what we're looking at is uh, so the sprite is an image, right? And the image has a width and a height. Since the sprite is created facing to the right, um, basically the length of the sprite is actually the width of the image. And that can be a bit confusing since the, but when you first create the sprite, it's, it's like this, it's facing to the right. So this is actually the width of the image, right? This would be the height of the image, right? From top to bottom, this is from left to right is the width of the image, uh, which I happen to know is 40, right? But maybe I don't. What if I didn't know that? Uh, I want to have, I want to have the computer figure that out for me, not for me have to figure it out myself. And so, um, so what, what I really want to know is I, I just basically, it's going to be the width of this image divided by two, right? Because divided by two would be from here to there, halfway across. So first thing I'm going to do is get the width of the image, right? Um, and, and I'm going to call this length, right? Because it's the length of the sprite, but it's actually the width of the image. Just so that's going to be a little bit confusing. But um, so I'm going to call this int length, by which we really mean the... Uh, width of the image right so int length that's the that so this is one of this is a property a property of the uh object of the object of the actor is the length so how do we get it what we really need to do is when the actor is first created look at our image and see how wide is that image so how do we do something when our actor is first created and the way we do it, there is uh, built into Java, I've told you about it before, we have the idea of a constructor. Every time you make a new thing, right, when I say, uh, when I say want a new whatever, right, look at this, what happens? I say um, player player equals new player, parentheses, right? This means we have a method, right? If, if I have two parentheses, that means I'm calling a method. I'm calling a method that creates the player, right? Here I'm calling a method that creates the obstacle. But if you notice, if I look in here, there is no method right now called just player, right, that makes the player. Where is it? Well, when you create an object, Java automatically gives it a constructor, a method, even if you don't see it, that is the method that creates that new thing. But you can actually make your own constructor and tell it, right, uh, uh, how, to, how to do this, right? And um, we do this, for example, when we make the green world, right? This is, notice how it says public green world. And, and notice here, right? It doesn't say public void green world. It doesn't, it's, it just says green world. There's no, this is the only type of method that does not have a return type like void or int or something else. So this is a constructor. This is the constructor of the world, right? Uh, even if, but even if, so the, here it's, it's coded in, right? But even if you don't, make one it's still there so if we want to put in a constructor we have to uh, j just we have to create one right here right and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say public player and this basically is the method that is called when the player is created it has to have the exact same name as this, right? I can't call this, if I call this public my player, it's going to give me an error, right? It's not going to like that. It's not going to like that because uh, it needs, says return type required, right? But if I say public player, it doesn't say return type required because it knows this is a constructor because it's the same name as this class, which means it knows that what it's returning is a player. It knows that. That's how constructors work. This is, so this is very basic Java. This is how Java is, this is how Java is built. When you do this, if I say public player, you're saying call this is the method that would be called when the player uh, is created now it automatically knows to make the player so I don't need to tell it that it will do that for me but what I do have to do is tell it uh, I want you to get the uh, my image and I want you to find how wide it is uh, the width of the image which again is going to be the length for our purposes so um, what I'll do, I can, I can do this all in one line of code for now. So I'm just going to do this. 
I'm going to say length. And so I, when I say length, right, it knows that I'm talking about this length. Notice I don't say int length. Why? Because I already made it up here. Length is a property that I'd made, right? And um, so uh, I could also say this dot length, but it's not necessary because it knows that length has to be uh, the, 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 the length property of this actor equals. Now we can do the get image, which I've showed you before, right? And then I'll just say get width. And so now what it's going to do is it's going to get my length, right? And it's going to it's going to get the width of the image and it's going to assign that to the length variable, right? So now and and it'll happen as soon as the thing's created. So I can count on the fact that if I have an object here that that length variable will be the width of the image. Um and the, the only way I could see this going wrong is, of course, if I got an actor that was facing a different direction, and then, of course, that I'd have to um, change the code a little bit. But uh, let's let's keep it simple for now. It would be a lot harder to deal with that, to deal with uh, that. So what I'm going to do is I'll say, um, so what I'm going to do is uh, when, when I say uh, the adjust amount, right, so it's, it's going to be, um, I'll, I'll start with int, um, to front, distance to front meaning um, uh, from center to the front, uh, right? Uh, equals it's going to be basically half the length, right? Which I know is going to be twenty because I happen to know this sprite happens to be forty, right? And then I'm going to replace this twenty with the distance to front. So again, this is good programming practice. What is good programming practice? It's you, you, you as little as possible you hard code your numbers in the actual look through here right notice how rarely I have actual numbers anywhere in my code right almost all of my numbers are up here right my speed is up here my length is up here even what the the coordinates I mean the um, rotation for up down left and right is all up here right the code just uses that stuff that I already made it the only time I'm gonna do it is something where it's really like basic like for returning zero or uh, returning or dividing by two really those are like the only actual numbers you're gonna see in here that's good coding practice because it makes your code flexible when your numbers are hard coded and you change something then your program all of a sudden isn't going to work because it's counting on these hard coded coded numbers if you set things in advance or figure thing, let the code figure things out in advance and you change something then your program will still work so let's try this and see if my code works now and it does and so now this is great right this is what we really need this is important I mean if I'm gonna have a maze game I'm going to have to have basically some obstacle thing that's going to keep me from going through there I mean obviously you can see it's not hundred percent perfect uh, and and the reason it's not a hundred percent perfect is because the rock image or maybe the bug image both of them have a little uh, extra space around them they are uh, they the, the uh, the, their images and every image is a rectangle and so they have a little space around them a little empty space and so what you're really seeing is that empty space bumping up against each other so that really is the front of this image hitting the front of that image but it's uh, but, but because it, it's it's there's a little extra space in there it looks like it's uh, in the way I'm gonna leave that I think that's fine for now it's close enough for my purposes um, to, to make things what we call pixel perfect which is to get rid of that to, to not deal with that extra space is a lot harder to code and I will teach it to you eventually but I'm not gonna do it right now for now we have what we want an obstacle that blocks the motion of our player. So now we can start making our maze in the next lesson. See you then.